season is finally over, and the Chicago Cubs miss the playoffs by six games out of the wild card, 10 games out of first place in the NL Central. We'll talk about the 2024 baseball season for the Chicago Cubs right after the intro. To the number one place for all Chicago baseball. Let's start the show. Good morning, Chicago baseball fans. Welcome to another episode of Chicago Cubs Central. It's your boy, Big Broski. Go ahead and hit us up at 773-389-6954 or Chicago Baseball Central at gmail.com. And of course, comment down below. I'm expecting to hear from you guys this week. Uh, this is the last episode of the season. It's been an up and down season for the Chicago Cubs and the season's finally over. Uh, they finished with a record of 83 and 79, finishing behind the doggone St. Louis Cardinals. They had an opportunity to win and at least take second place in the division yesterday, but they lose three to nothing versus the Cincinnati Reds. And honestly, it makes sense. That's just basically how the Cubs season has been going. So it kind of tracks that they don't score a single run. On in the last game of the season, and uh, the main reason something like that sucks is because they were at Wrigley Field. Fans would have at least liked to see a, a run scored uh, in the game, but they didn't do it. So they go out in a whimper. Uh, the end of the season, they didn't score any runs, and now it's uh, time for Jed Hoyer and company to put together a team that can benefit uh, the coaching style of. Craig Council, and that's where we'll start with the season review. Craig Council comes over from the Milwaukee Brewers, uh, who did win a division. Uh, and, you know, they won a division last year with him as their manager. He came to the Cubs to try to push the Cubs over the hump. Cubs missed the playoffs by one game last season, um, and they blew a division lead and a wild card lead uh, to, to, to miss out on the playoffs last season. And here they are this season missing out on the playoffs by 10 games in the division, six games in the wild card. And Craig Council didn't do much to kind of show me that he's a better manager than David Ross uh, throughout the season. He just didn't push the right buttons at the right time, uh, with the exception of the month of August, where everything started to click. A lot of players started to get healthy, so on and so forth. But it's baseball. You need to have a next man up mentality. One of the things that I think that they waited too long on was bringing up Pete Crow Armstrong and having him be an everyday player. Another thing that I think that they they messed up on was how they used their back of the in back of the uh, rotation. Um, and I believe they relied on Kyle Hendricks a little bit too much as opposed to giving some of the younger players an opportunity to lead these this team to wins. So. Uh, my grade for Craig Council on the season is a C minus uh, because I just feel like he left a lot of wins on the field and the Cubs could have done better had he made some different decisions, uh, especially going into the month of September where they still had a chance to make the playoffs. Uh, there was just times where he just didn't make winning decisions, didn't put out winning lineups. Uh, and that's what happens. That's what happens. So C minus for Craig Council on the season. Uh, we'll go to offense next. Uh, the offense was just rough, uh, inconsistent all season long, and they really lacked power. Uh, Ian Happ led the team with 25 home runs, uh, 86 RBIs for him as well, 80 walks and 168 strikeouts. And that goes to show you, uh, this team, they had uh, plate discipline issues throughout the year. He did have 13, uh, 13 stolen bases as well, caught stealing two times for a 243 average. And then you'll hear that pretty much uh, nobody really hit over 300 uh, or close to 300 uh, with the exception of, I think it was uh, Nico Horner uh, and Kristen Bet Betancourt, but Betancourt wasn't an everyday player uh, for this team. So, uh, Michael Bush, uh, prize possession, uh, this off season, the Cubs picked him up in a trade with the LA Dodgers. And he was pretty solid over there at uh, first base, decent rookie season for him, uh, 21 home runs, 65 
RBI, 63 walks, and 162 strikeouts, two stolen bases, one caught stealing for him in 496 at-bats. He, 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 his batting average was 248. Uh, he picked it up. Uh, he, he basically was consistent all season. That's what you're going to expect from him. Uh, Seiya Suzuki came in with MVP aspirations. He was the odds-on favorite on the Cubs, at least, to win MVP for the Major League Baseball season. Uh, and he was just underwhelming. Uh, 132 games played, 512 at-bats. 74 runs, 145 hits, 27 doubles, 6 triples, and 21 home runs, 73 RBI, 63 walks, and 160 strikeouts, 16 stolen bases, 6 caught stealings for a 283 batting average, which is actually pretty good uh, for him, but I just don't, I, I thought he would just have a better season, and he didn't. Uh, then he did have a couple of defensive gaps as well over there in right field but it is what it is um i'm expecting him to opt into his contract and be a chicago club next year hopefully he can keep that batting average up while hitting for a little bit more power because 21 home runs is, is not gonna cut it cody bellinger opted he got re-signed by the cubs with two opt-out clauses and i'm pretty sure the prevailing thought process amongst fans at least is that hopefully he opts out of the contract to free up a little bit of money and give the cubs wiggle room in a free agency hot stove period he did play 130 games was injured a little bit 516 at bat stove 72 runs 137 hits 23 doubles two triples 16 I'm sorry, 18 home runs, 78 RBIs, 45 walks, and 89 strikeouts. So we know that he has plate discipline at the very least. Nine, nine stolen bases and two caught stealings, 266 batting average for him on the season. He did pick things up in the second half, played well enough to maybe have other teams be interested in signing him in this offseason, or maybe he opts in comes bets on himself again because he has an opt-out clause next season and he plays well enough to be maybe traded uh mid-july um for to another team if the cubs aren't playing well uh dansby swanson did not have a good season in my opinion 149 games 534 at bats 82 runs 129 hits 27 doubles two triples 16 home runs 66 rbis and 54 walks and 144 strikeouts 19 stolen bases three caught stealings that's just not going to cut it for one one of your highest paid players uh 237 batting average isn't good either and honestly it was much um no, he had a 242 batting average, and honestly, it was much worse than that. He did start to rack up a few more hits in the last month of the season to get that batting average up, but it was bad all season. Pete Crow Armstrong, one of the young guys on the team who's looking to take that step forward next season, uh, and he was solid. 123 games, uh, 372 at-bats, 46 runs, uh, 88 hits, uh, 13 so, uh, doubles, six triples, and 10 home runs, 47 RBIs, 20 to 21 walks, and 91, 98 strikeouts, 27 stolen bases to three caught stealings. So you imagine that uh, he'll play at least 150 games next season. You give him that those, those extra 30 games, maybe 90 to 100 or so more at-bats, and you expect, I'm expecting that 27 stolen bases to be closer to 40 or even 50 stolen bases next season, depending on how he plays, if he stays healthy, so on and so forth. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing Pete Crow Armstrong next season. He's one of the young stars on this team and defensively we know that he's very capable uh then you got miguel amaya at catcher uh, 170 17 games 328 at bats 32 runs 76 uh, hits 13 doubles two triples for miguel amaya and eight home runs he had a stretch in august where he was hitting a lot of home runs but that was pretty much it uh 47 rbis 23 walks and 62 strikeouts um so you know you got what you got from miguel amaya between him and christian betancourt they were solid at the catching position um and but they just don't have much power uh between the two of them um 
Christian Betancourt only had three home runs. Then you got Patrick Williams, Wisdom um, in 75 games. Uh, he, he just, you know, he was just in and out of the lineup. I believe he was hurt uh, with a 171 art, uh, average. Ugh, disgusting. Nico Horner was solid. He was solid at second base. We know that he plays defense pretty well. He did have the most at-bats on the season for the Cubs. Uh, for 86 runs, uh, 159 hits. Uh, so he did have the most hits. For the Cubs this year, 35 doubles led the team in that as well. Uh, seven home runs, though, only 48 RBIs. So he got on, but, you know, he didn't really uh, get people in. 44 walks compared to 66 uh, strikeouts and then 31 stolen bases. He also led the team in that. And the 273 batting average close to top of the team in that. So Nico Horner, for all intents and purposes, was your best offensive player with the exception of home runs uh mike talkman was uh was pretty solid this season he saw, saw a lesser role than he did last season uh but he did do okay with a 248 uh uh batting average and uh 70 strikeouts to 47 walks for him uh then you got uh isak paredes who was traded and brought over to the team um basically at the trade deadline and he was all right 52 games 179 at bats only 23 runs scored but 40 hits in, uh, in, in those 50 games, so not bad. Uh, six doubles, no triples. He did hit three home runs. Uh, we do know he does have power, so hopefully a full season under the for, for, you know with the Cubs next season. Uh, should we will see upticks in all of this. 25 RBIs, 24 walks, 37 strikeouts, and one stolen base for him. Uh, but a 223 batting average leaves a lot to be desired for somebody we know can bat at closer to. 300 and then of course you got the rest of the guys on the team that didn't really play much we're not going to get too deep into that uh but overall i give the offense a solid c maybe even a d plus because i just feel like they just they let us down it was too many times the cubs got shut out uh they they lost so many one run games i lost count uh it's definitely in the 30s of run wearing games that they lost um, they've shut out so many times, even the last game of the season, they couldn't put up any runs. Uh, they left so Shota Imanaga a few games where he could have had at least 20 wins on the season. We'll get into pitching in a second, but the offense didn't pick him up. And honestly, without the month of August, the offense was just bad all the way around. So I think I'll stick with the D plus for the offense. Y'all let me know how y'all feeling about the coaching, uh, the coaching grade of a C minus, uh, the offense D plus. Um, let me know what you give the guys a uh, grade down in the comments, or, you know, you can hit us up and let us know in a voicemail. So moving on to pitching, uh, the Chicago Cubs pitching was just all over the place all season long. The one there's a couple of bright spots, honestly, but the biggest bright spot was Shota in Managa. In 29 games, he finished with 15 and three. Uh, no complete games, though. Uh, and he did have 173 innings pitched. Pitch. Uh, he did give up 149 hits. 66, only 66 runs given up uh, in all those games. Um, 56 of those were earned runs. 27 home runs is not that bad you know it is what it is uh he basically gave up a home run a game uh he hit three bad batters and he walked only 28 batters that's one walk per game which is phenomenal and then uh he did have 174 strikeouts and i think that was right around what his over under was uh for the season so hey and he was just, uh he you know he hit the ball too a little bit but i'm i'm just you know hey Listen, well, he didn't hit that. They don't hit in the National League anymore, what I'm talking about. But he had a point two 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 five average. Uh, so T 2.91 ERA. ERA was under three. And again, in those 29 games, he could have easily won 20 of them, maybe even 25. Uh, but the team just didn't pick him up. They didn't pick him up. He only had a couple of bad games where he was just, like, tagged. Uh, but other than that, he was solid all season. So shout out to Shota Imanaga, who I believe is this season's MVP. He was the best player on the team. He was much watch, must watch baseball uh, for the season. Justin Steele got injured at the very beginning season, and he was basically injured toward the end of the season. He was only five and five, only twenty four games, um, one complete game, uh, one hundred and thirty four innings pitched, one hundred and eleven hits given up, fifty four runs, forty six of them were earned. 12 home runs given up and hit four batters 
walked 37. So just look, imagine that, you know, he played five less games than Soto Imanaga and had more walks. Uh, so, you know, he had 135 strikeouts, though, still. So I'm not mad at him for that. I just want to see him healthy. Uh, and we'll see what it looks like to have him and Soto as a true one-two punch uh, out of that bullpen next season. Jamison Tyone was the surprise of the season um, as the uh, starting pitcher. 12-8 and eight in 28 games, uh, 165 innings pitched, 154 hits, 67 runs, 60, uh, 60 earned runs, and 21 home runs given up. One hit batter, 33 walks and 125 strikeouts. Solid season from Jamison Tyone. Finished 12 and 8. Not mad at him. His ERA was 3.27. Justin Steele's was 3.07, by the way. Javier Assad, he was okay. Up and down, uh, was basically the most erratic pitcher of the starters, with the exception of Kyle Hendricks, of course. But Javier Assad, 7 and 6 on the season, did finish above 500. The last pitcher uh, really to do that um, at, of the starters uh, for the Cubs. And then he, um, he he had 29 games, 29 starts, 147 innings pitched. So he did pitch as many games as Shota Managa, but he got pulled earlier than Shota most games. He pitched 30 innings, 30 less innings than he did, and they played the same amount of games. Uh, he did give up 143 hits, uh, 64 runs, 61 of them earned, 20 home runs given up five hit batters and 63 walks. And that was really pretty much his issue. He did not have enough command. 63 walks is crazy. He basically walked two batters a game, 124 strikeouts. Uh, so it is what it is there. But I'm not mad at Javier Asad. He's supposed to be a bullpen pitcher. He ended up starting 29 games, gave you seven wins. A couple of those games he could have won that the Cubs didn't help him out in. It is what it is. Kyle Hendricks was by far the worst pitcher on the roster this season. We appreciate everything that he's done in the Cubs uniform. World Series winner, but 4-12 and record. Now, he did finish the season strong uh, by winning two or three of his last games. Uh, he did have a nice, strong start to finish his career, maybe, as a Chicago Cub. 4-12, and 29 games um, played, 24 games started, 130 innings pitched, 147 hits given up, 88 earned, 88 runs, and 86 of them were earned, and he gave up. 27 home, I mean, 21 home runs looked like he was going to give up like 40 home runs because the start of the season he was giving up a lot, but he did tone that down uh, as the season went on. Three hit batters, 43 walks. And again, I thought he was going to walk way more, but he toned that down in 87 strikeouts, only 87 strikeouts in 29 games or so, 28 games. That's crazy. Uh, so, hey, that is what it is. Um, Kyle Hendrick, we appreciate everything that he's done, but he had a horrible season even though he picked it up at the end then you had a couple of other pitchers hayden westneski ben brown drew smiley uh porter hodge of course out of the bullpen hector nearest was one of those players that was traded for from the dodgers and he just didn't do anything uh jordan wicks came on at the end of the season as he was injured and he looked bad um keegan thompson jorge lopez luke little out of the bullpen the bullpen uh nate pearson like they uh the bullpen was tough. It was rough this season for the bullpen. It was up and down. They did pick it up later, uh, you know, toward July, August, where they were better. But to the start of the season was just brutal for the bullpen. And the Cubs has never really recovered from it. So pitching uh, with the top, uh, with Soto Imanaga, uh, Jameson Tyone, Javier Assad, and I'll even just throw Justin Steele in there. The starting pitching was pretty solid. I'll give them a C plus. Um, maybe a B minus uh, on the season because they just really didn't have that third or fourth starter that could really help. It was really Jason, Jason, Jameson Tyone and Shota Imanaga as the pitchers that you could really depend on. Javier Assad came in and gave you what he could, and Justin Steele was too injured. So maybe C plus is good for them. And then the bullpen uh, takes it, you know, their grade down as well because they were just too inconsistent on the season. So What's next for the Chicago Cubs, man? Let us know what y'all think down below on the grades for all three phases, coaching, hitting, and pitching. But what's next for the Chicago Cubs? I say they need to make a hard push for Juan Soto. That's it. You already see what having a game changer on your team looks like. When you have a player like Soto 
um, uh, Shohei Otani, for example, over on the Dodgers and the things that he's doing, it, it, it affects winning. It affects winning. And the Cubs definitely need to have a game changer on their roster. We already know that Juan Soto is still very young. He's only 25 years old. Uh, but on the season, he he's, he's, he's healthy. Uh, he had 576 at bats, 128 runs, 166 hits, 109 RBIs. He was walked 129 times. I mean, I mean, it's, that's crazy. 119 strikeouts, 41 home runs, seven stolen bases, batted 288. Like I just don't, you know. Hey, listen, a player like that needs to be on your roster. He is a stud, and the Chicago Cubs need to make a push for him. Point blank, period. You 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 do everything you can to get a player like him. You missed out on Otani last season because you didn't think that a team would be willing to pay him a billion dollars. It is basically what the Dodgers did. The Dodgers gave him everything, including the key to the city. So I'm not saying run out that type of bread from Juan Soto, but you will you make a hard push for him. At least put the effort into bringing him to the Chicago Cubs. I think that would affect winning in a way that would make this team a playoff team for many years to come. And you also figure out how to convince Cody Bellinger to opt out of his contract so you can free up some money uh, and build around this team and build a team that Craig Council can coach to, to wins. And finally, man, Jed Hoyer, it's up to you, bro. Like, what do you want? Do you want this team to be on the cusp every year or are you trying to push them over the hump because that's what needs to happen so y'all let us know down below what do you think the cubs should do this offseason should they go for a big name like juan soto or anybody else or should they stand pat uh retool this team just a little bit and see if it, they can push themselves over the hump let us y'all already know hit us up at 773-389-6954 or chicago baseball central at gmail.com like comment and share appreciate all the love and support that you guys have given this channel all season long i know that it's been tough for me uh holding it down pretty much by myself um on both baseball teams we will be separating this channel it will be just chicago Cubs central next season and the chicago white Sox will have their own channel as well but appreciate the love and support as we push for more followers and we appreciate all the love and support we get across the whole whole side town network side town sports network from chicago bulls bears cubs Cubs and White Sox, of course, Blackhawks, Sky, NBA Central, and of course, the Shot Bulls podcast with the Cognac Boys, C Dub, and Bobby. All right, for Hayes, uh, Big Kev, myself, of course, uh, Steve O, C Dub, and Bobby, thanks for a great season, you guys. Appreciate y'all, man. We're going to holler at y'all next time. Peace.